She's the worthy opponent I found for you. Don Juan said that we had to wait for an omen before we knew what to do with La Catalina, the woman who was interfering with my hunting. We began to walk toward the east. It was getting dark. Suddenly, some crows flew out from behind some tall bushes and disappeared behind a hill. Don Juan said that that hill was our destination. Once we arrived there, he whispered in my ear that I had to imitate his movements. He began a sort of dance, making a rhythmical thump with his right foot. It consisted of seven even beats, spaced by a cluster of three fast thumps. After a few clumsy attempts, I was more or less capable of reproducing the same thumping. What's this for? I whispered. He told me that I was thumping like a rabbit, and sooner or later, the huntress would be attracted by the noise and would show up to see what was going on. Don Juan stopped thumping, but he had me continue, marking the pace with a movement of his hand. From time to time, he would listen attentively, with his head slightly tilted to the right, seemingly to pick out noises in the chaparral. At one point, he signaled me to stop and remained in a most alert position. It was as if he were ready to spring up and jump on an unknown and unseen assailant. He then motioned me to continue the thumping, and after a while, he stopped me again. Every time I stopped, he listened with such a concentration that every fiber in his body seemed to be tense to the point of bursting. Suddenly, he jumped to my side and whispered in my ear that the twilight was at its full power. The whole world seemed to be a uniform mass of dark silhouettes, which didn't have any visible boundaries. I heard the eerie distant cry of an animal, a coyote or perhaps a night bird. It happened so suddenly I didn't pay any attention to it, but Don Juan's body jerked a bit. I felt his vibration as he stood next to me. Here we go. Thump again and be ready. She's here. I began to thump furiously, and Don Juan signaled me frantically to relax and thump rhythmically. Don't scare her away. Calm down, and don't lose her marbles. He again began to mark the pace of my thumping, and after a second time he made me stop, I heard the same cry again. This time it seemed to be the cry of a bird, which was flying over the hill. I kept my eyes glued to that spot, and suddenly, as if in a nightmare, a dark shadow leaped at me. I shrieked and fell down to the ground on my back. For a moment, the dark silhouette was superimposed against the dark blue sky, and then it sailed through the air and landed beyond us in the bushes. I heard the sound of a heavy body crashing into the shrubs, and then an eerie outcry. Don Juan helped me up and guided me in the darkness. We didn't speak at all on the way back to his house. What do you want me to say? Don Juan asked after I urged him repeatedly to explain the events I had witnessed a few hours before. What was it? You know damn well who it was. Don't water it down with what was it. It's who it was that's important. I had worked out an explanation that seemed to suit me. The figure I had seen looked very much like a kite. Quit beating around the bush. Get to the point. Wasn't it a woman? I had to admit that when I fell down and looked up, I saw the dark silhouette of a woman with a long skirt leaping over me in a very slow motion. Then something seemed to have pulled the dark silhouette, and it flew over me with great speed and crashed into the bushes. In fact, that movement was what gave me the idea of being pranked with a kite. Don Juan refused to discuss the incident any further. The next day, I went to visit some Yaqui friends. <laughs>